today we're actually doing a little bit different and there's a reason why I'm here and not in the studio. This is going to be a, a very exciting episode and where we're unveiling or watching the unveiling happening of Utah supercar owners next hypercar or supercar. I'm not sure what it is. I don't know any details. Nobody knows any details up until this point, but uh, we're going to go check it out. It's going to be really fun. It should be a great event overall. It was for a charity, which is becoming a thing that he's doing pretty regularly. A uh, fun little charity event um, in where if you donate, you get to come to one of these. So please do go donate. I'll put a link down below to uh, to a local charity. Um, try and give back in ways we can, guys. But this is an awesome way to not only get the community together around something that's really, really cool, but to also do something good with that. Um, I will say Utah supercar owner does like to be uno an anonymous, 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 uh, which is why we won't show his face. We we might get an interview. I'm not promising anything, um, but I might mic him up and at least have him talk about his car. Uh, if not, you get what you get, guys. But um, it should be a fun event. We're gonna now go see some of the cars here at Lamborghini dealership of Salt Lake City where the unveiling's happening. And uh, see what we can find. Hopefully some Porsches in the parking lot. Because I don't think this car is going to be a Porsche. It might. It could always be a 959. In which that case I'm like complete on the inside. Um, but likelihood it's something else. Sorry. I got to take a call. But anyway guys. Enough of that. I'm going to take this call. And uh, probably build up the next three minutes with suspense. So. Probably pretty obvious as to what that is, and I probably look like the biggest douche holding a red camera and vlogging with it. Yeah, a little bit. Well, I'm <laughs> <laughs> There's so many people inside and I'm not a crowd person. So I'm having a little bit of a hard time trying to get this car whoa, all to itself, which is kind of what I like to do. So we're gonna hang back, sit tight for a little bit, and then we'll uh, get some intimate time with the car. Hopefully people will clear out and get Utah supercar owner to talk about it. So it should be a good time. But right now I'm gonna kind of chill outside because I actually like the snow. It's kind of weird. Utah likes snow. But uh, maybe you can see how many people are in there. It's not a good time for, I wouldn't say a non-social person like me, but for a person who does not like crowds. Not that I don't like people, I, like, I love people. I just, too many of them, it's too many. But in the meantime, in the spirit of cars, in the spirit of snow, why don't we look at some cars that are out here in the snow? Nobody's out here. Maybe we can get away with this. We're gonna play a game called uh, What's Underneath That Blanket of Snow? Ferrari. That's about as much as I know. That is a Cayman, I wanna say. Looks like uh, it's the no roof Cayman. My least a favorite of them. I'm sorry, Cayman guys with no roofs. I just don't like those kind of designs. I, I like a roof. Then we have my personal favorite of the lot for now until I under, well, actually this is my personal favorite of the lot, but we'll go with this one. GT3 looks like a 991. This looks like a 992. GT3, beautiful car. Oh my gosh, you guys are zoomed in all the way. Okay, sorry about that. My camera is not rated for the snow and it's kind of freaking out. So we're gonna continue our game. Uh, but uh, this Lotus, I think we got two Lotuses. I don't know much about Lotus, but that says GT. GT usually means fast, so. Urus, I'm guessing. Urus, hardly even know her. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Tesla, another Urus. 
one more urus for the road, just in case your other urus wasn't doing its urus things. And then you got another urus. And then you got my favorite. What do you guys want back here? Okay, well, that, that's not a Porsche. This is a Porsche. Or I could be mistaken. Another Urus. Some more cars. Macan? Cayenne. Cay Cayenne. Okay. RS. GT4 RS, ladies and gentlemen. Favorite car of the lot? GT4 RS. Look, that says RS. That says GT4 RS. That's a GT4 RS. Favorite car of today. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna hide right here so I can film the rear end of that car. Oh, favorite car of the lot? Found. Mission accomplished. We're gonna chill out here for a sec. Wait till the crowd clears and then go get some shots. Maybe get an interview with uh, Utah supercar owner himself, but we'll see. Should be fun. So this is the Koenigsegg CCXR. One of three in the United States in manual. Runs on biofuel E85. I've always wanted a Koenigsegg though. They're handmade, custom, bespoke. Uh, really, really special cars. This one is upgraded with the Ajera suspension. Um, it was in the movie Fast and Furious 5. Uh, and uh, after that, the owner took it, they sent it back, and they had the ghost package installed, which you can see is kind of the, the blacked out. They put the rear diffuser on it. Obviously, this big rear spoiler. Um, I think even the front spoiler has been upgraded. And. Um, you know, just a really unique car. Like, it took me two years to find a Koenigsegg. There are other Koenigseggs out there. This car has 1,800 miles on it. It's a manual transmission, which I wanted in a hypercar. Like, there's just not that many hypercars that are made in manual. And so there's like the Carrera GT, a couple of the Zondas, and this, you know? And it's like, all right. So, narrowing it down, I wanted a Koenigsegg, I wanted a manual, and they just kind of came together. Yeah. The other car, this Pagani was not planned. <laughs> This was a, an opportunistic purchase, although I've always wanted one, and specifically, I wanted a Roadster. So the Roadster is different. If you look at the very end of it, it's got this flared, kind of unique bodywork that acts actually as some downforce. There's active aero on the back. You can see, obviously, the, the beautiful blue color with the exposed carbon. I just love the spec. I uh, love the Roadster. I, would, I was only going to buy a Pagani Roadster, and this one just happened to come available. on like a sketchy thing right now. In fact, I'm gonna take a picture. This is how sketch I run. But um, I just wanted to say thank you guys for watching. Um, thank you to Utah Supercar Owner for allowing us to interview you and talk about your cars. And thanks for sharing your cars here, sir. So seriously, thank you guys. I can't do this without you. Um, it's like late and I got a lot of work to do. But uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you enjoyed the interview and being able to talk to uh, the gentleman who owns the two cars in there, the two new Pagani and... Uh, Koenigsegg. Had a brain fart there. Because <laughs> there was also a Lamborghini in there, but that's the deal. Anyway, I digress. Before I get too far in the weeds, because you guys know I like to banter, like and subscribe if you can. Uh, that helps with this channel. I'm kind of a Porsche channel, so check out the other Porsche content. Uh, I do everything I can one-off stuff like this, but uh, hope you enjoy it. Leave a comment which one's your favorite, the Pagani or Konizek, and uh, we'll catch you the next time. Take care.